County. It's, it's um, across the state of Texas and across the nation. So hopefully because of this um, information that we're sharing today, uh, we can begin to save lives uh, universally uh, across uh, the state and across the nation. So again, thank you for being here. And at this time, I'll turn it over to uh, our Chief of Safety and Security, Jerry Scrocky. Good morning, uh, J-E-R-I, last name is S-K-R-O-C-K-I. What I want to address is that we all know and we hear it, we see it on the news, but our goal and our focus has been as a school district to get the message to our children. How do we educate our kids? Because quite frankly, they're not the people watching the news. They're not reading the headlines. They may read a blurb that comes up on a pop-up, but our focus has been over the last uh, two or three weeks in talking with Chief Barnett um, is really about how do we get into the classroom and how do we educate our students. You can see next to me we have signs um, that are going to go up. It's going on our website. We're also hitting a fentanyl safety page on our website. But we had a vision on side of that was literally getting into the classroom. And so what we decided to do as a district is we're creating a PSA within our team and we are getting local community um, members who are our subject matter experts to participate and help us with that PSA. That public service announcement will then be shown at our middle and high school levels to really try to get these, these children, our students, to understand the risks, the dangers, and the warning signs, and really what they can do if they experience it, what options are available for them. We know we have school resource officers, Hayes County Sheriff's Office staffs are our secondary schools. Knowing that they're not there for arresting people, they're there as a resource. That's the big part of law enforcement that when we deal with school resource officers that we don't seem to, to, to market well enough. And so we don't want you to just see the uniform that has a badge and, and, and a patch on it that says law enforcement. We also want you to realize that they're, they're a resource. Um, Dr. Wright really, and, and as well as Chief Barnett, really talked about the importance of speaking up. Um, you're not tattling, you're not, you're, you potentially are saving a life and unfortunately I can never package that and tell you what you did made the difference because we'll never know if what you said to someone was really the difference when it came to that person not taking a pill. So our goal and, and really is within the next um, two weeks is to have that video completed. Um, I'm very proud to say that we have had no one wanted to say no within the community. Everybody wanted to participate and be a part of that. Um, so that's our goal um, in, the, in the next week or two is that we'll be rolling that message out. It will be up on our Facebook page. It will be on our district website. We encourage and we want our parents to watch it um, and know it as well. And really, I, I we'll echo what, what both, both, both Dr. Wright and, and Chief Barnett said is that we have to have that discussion with our kids. We have to be aware. Um, we all have to remain vigilant, know what the signs and symptoms are. Um, at the end of the day, we, we're a community and we're responsible for each other, these kids we're raising. Um, and our goal is, is we want to make sure that we're getting everybody that we possibly can to be aware of the dangers. Um, counterfeit pills are out there. You can't look at them and tell the difference. Medical professionals can't tell the difference. Um, that's why they're tested. And so the reality is we have to focus on those things. That's part of why the district was so stringent not only because of an active shooter incident in, in the Uvalde, but it also includes our safety and security protocols to make sure that we're not getting deliveries in the middle of the day and all of those things. Um, safety and security doesn't just include an active shooter event, right? It's, it's fire, it's weather, and it's drugs and alcohol. Um, and our goal is, quite frankly, to make sure that we address all of those areas that we possibly can. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to um, uh, San Marcos, Hayes County EMS, um, Chief Swisher. Uh, Jim Swisher, he will talk a little bit about the emergent um, issues that they deal with on their end through EMS. Hi, I'm Jim Swisher, the Assistant Chief of San Marcos Hayes County EMS. That's J-I-M-S-W-I-S-H-E-R. So when EMS gets involved, that's most parents' worst day ever. There's three kids out there. It's their parents and family's worst day ever. No going back, no returning. The problem we see is when we arrive, it's way late in the game because the kids take the drug, then they look at each other and they notice something's going wrong and then they have to wait in their minds and they have to make a decision whether they're going to dial 911 or they're gonna leave. A lot of times they will dial 911 and they'll leave. We'll show up, the officers will show up. There's no one there. Or there's someone there pointing, they're over there and then they disappear. 
So we don't have any idea of what went on beforehand. We're way late in the game. The damage is done. And there we sit working a 15-year-old kid doing CPR on him or before CPR aggressively trying to figure out what's going on and trying to get the drugs on board that will take care of the issue. The, the thing that the kids need to understand is if they're involved in these kind of activities, they need to pay attention to their friends and they need to discourage their friends. Or I talk about the worst day of a parent's life, worst day of a friend's life. You're having a party with your friend, you're talking to your friends, you're trying something, you're experimenting on something, your friend goes unconscious, worst day in your life. When the medics show up and they work as hard as they can and they take them to the hospital and the outcome is really bad, it's the worst day of your life. So as Hayes County grows, as the school districts are growing at hugely, huge rates, in comes the opportunity for more business ideas and more drug dealers and this is where our problem stems from. The, the fix to the problem is not all the stuff that we can do on the top side. It's, come, it's gonna have to come from the kids making a conscious decision, a moral decision to, to get involved with their friends and de deter their friends. Because I can stand up here all day long and say, stop, don't do this. They're not listening to me. They're listening to their peer support groups. And so that's, that's the key for us is, is they need to be aware and they need to be willing to stand up for their friends. Parents need to be willing to stand up for their kids. Um, and so, like I said, when we get there, we're way behind the curve. And a lot of times we have to figure out what's going on in general. If somebody just was able to tell us they took baby blues or they took fentanyl, that helps us out immensely. Beginning of 2022, we had to increase the amount of medications we were carrying on the trucks because this drug is so potent that our normal treatments were not working for it. Um, the, the drugs that we have to use are, because it's an epidemic around the nation, the drugs we have to use are in short supply. We're trying to get those in all the police officers' vehicles. We're trying to increase our doses. The hospitals are increasing their stores of it. So drug shortages are a problem with, with fighting this. So um, those are just parts that we look at from our standpoint. And as I said before, we're gonna kind of do a hybrid. So we can take a couple of questions here or if you want to kind of break and do one-on-ones. Um, I'm good either way. This is, we're here for you to get what you need to help uh, us tell this story. So I'm seeing maybe, yes. So with anything, we have some very outspoken students that are going to advocate um, and really be involved with that. But what we know is there's a lot of reservations among children, um, students, because they don't want to get their friends in trouble. Maybe they don't want to get in trouble. So our goal is quite frankly what, Ch what Chief Swisher is talking about, is really to try to get them to understand the importance and recognize and get there before um, it happens. And so we recognize that it is going to be an uphill battle. Um, but again we just have to we have to just keep peeling away at the onion and, and really get them to get the information out there as soon as as we possibly can um, you know our goal is is really if you know someone and you know a friend who had to be um, hospitalized or had to be addressed getting that individual to um, you know maybe speak or talk to their friend group and things like that so that's one of the things that we're also attempting um, to work on for that So that's a, we have a group um, message with all of us. And so we're, we're, again, this isn't just a Hay CISD. This is also San Marcos, right? Dripping Springs, Wimberley. One of the things that we do is we have a very close knit group. And so we are small enough that we know everybody's numbers and we text. And so when we do get information in regards to that, what's immediately happening is we're coordinating with our campus, our coordinating staff, 
as well as our administrative um, folks because we're typically getting that information either from fire EMS or law enforcement that we had an issue. Um, and so our goal in any of those things, or it may be social media, we hear about it oftentimes by social media because that's almost happening before law enforcement may be even clearing the scene. Um, and so that being said, what we do is activate those resources and, and have them available for those students who seek them out. Um, we try to publicize that and, and really have that reach out. We really want to, we collaborate with law enforcement typically in a death because of course they're oftentimes being handled by the law enforcement piece for the families and so we don't want to overstep but a lot of times what, what may happen is we'll reach out with affected families and things like that so that when they do return to school after an event they do know that there is someone there that if they need a break or a timeout or really need to talk that there is a school option for them as well. Yes, so um, all of our student clinics are staffed with um, Narcan as well as our SRO population that we have on our secondary campuses um, as well. What we are also, of course, looking at and have collaborated with Hayes County is the addition of the mobile patrol units, um, the three officers in regards to that. They will also be equipped with that Narcan population. We're also very lucky. I know traffic is bad in Hayes County, but we do have really good response time with EMS. But uh, as we said, I mean, it, it's, it's not unusual for maybe a, a child to, uh, you know, take something, maybe go into a, sit in their patrol car or sit in their, their car in the parking lot or maybe sit in a bathroom and it's too late at that point. So we really want to make sure that people um, understand that if you start having those symptoms and you start feeling not right, seek out help, seek out medical help. I want you to go tell a teacher. We want you to go to the nurse's clinic. Yes, ma'am. I'll turn that over to Chief. Yeah, it, the question is what apps are they using? And actually, they're using just about every social media app that you can, that you can find, uh, especially those that use uh, anonymity as their selling point. So I don't particularly have a list for you here, but it's any app that people are using to chat, communicate, and they're using code words. They'll send out just a code word that they have something for sale, and it's only up for a short amount of time, and then they're gone. These drug dealers, they know they can advertise this. These pills are cheap. Uh, they're inexpensive, they'll meet quickly, and now that we're seeing more of it in Kyle, it's more readily available. So it's, it's basically any social media app where people can communicate, and uh, that's, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the names, but that's what they're doing. I I'll remind you one thing, I'm sorry, I'll remind you one thing. There is no piece of these pills that they're taking that is safe. We are hearing in the subsequent interviews from survivors that, that they believe that if they break the pill into smaller pieces, they can take, a, take an amount of that pill and it's safe. And then when they get maybe not the reaction they wanted, a high or some kind of reaction, they decide to take the second piece and the third piece or maybe the other half of the pill. And that doesn't contain the same amount of fentanyl as the first piece or the first half. So there, our message is there's no piece of these illegal drugs that are safe for these children. Um, so please help us get that message out as well. The other thing that, that came to mind is that when we do these subsequent interviews with their friends and their siblings usually, because the parents aren't often aware uh, and it is heart-wrenching to see these parents in agony in the front yard of their own home where they've just discovered their teenager deceased in a bedroom. It's heart-wrenching. When we conduct the secondary interviews with friends and siblings and we get beyond the initial conversation and we really start to find out what they know, sometimes they know what's happening with their older brother or sister. And that's heart-wrenching as well to see a young child, seven, eight, nine years old, describe their older siblings drug usage. They see it too, so parents continue that conversation with your younger children about what they see. So sometimes the information is out there. Our officers do carry Narcan to answer the other question, and they do perform CPR on these young teenagers, and that's, that's challenging on these officers as they arrive and they're doing CPR on 14-year-olds with no other explained medical emergency other than the drug-induced situation that they're in, and it's happening all too often. We have, we've, we've heard some of the street names or nicknames that they're gonna call this new candy coloring. They're calling it rainbow and other terms. Uh, drug dealers are going to adapt and they're gonna try to market their illegal product to children in any way they can. The more enticing they can make it look, the more um, commonplace they can make it look, 
so that maybe it's not detected by a school teacher or a principal or a police officer because it looks like a traditional piece of candy, then that's absolutely what they're going to do because they're going to try to get this deadly substance into the hands of the children and they're going to make it look as enticing as they can. Yes, we are aware of it. Yes, our officers are trained to look for that. We want parents to educate themselves as well. The information is now becoming more available on social media. The DEA is doing a really good job at trying to keep America aware of what's happening in the drug trend for fentanyl. So follow some of those sites as well and you can see the pictures. Uh, but I encourage parents to absolutely have these conversations about just that. Even things that look safe, candies from other people, don't take that either. There's, there's no need to take these candies or things that are not issued to you by your parents or lawfully prescribed medication as Dr. Wright uh, mentioned. Um, but we are aware of the trend. We think that'll be more dangerous and we hope that this conversation today can help prevent some future deaths. So although, and uh, Chief Swisher may want to add something from a medical perspective, but although there are lawfully prescribed medical uses in the medical field under the direction of a doctor, there may be some beneficial use in a hospital setting or otherwise, there is no street safe amount of this drug to take. There is no sliver of a pill, half of a pill, or a piece of a pill that is safe to take. As I mentioned earlier, these pills are not made in laboratories uh, where things are done the right way and they're used for, for the right person under the right medical circumstances. They're made in backyards and, backyards and garages and foreign countries, not by professionals. And they will, uh, they will mix this fentanyl drug with anything that they have at their disposal to press that into a pill form. And the other substances can be deadly themselves and then you combine it into a pill with fentanyl these children do not know, they may think they know what they're taking, but they do not know everything that's contained in that pill. So there is no safe amount from our standpoint. Yes, ma'am. I'll just, I'll add on here too, the, the pictures on our posters, if you need to source that. I, I took those from uh, the fentanyl fact sheet from the U.S. Uh, uh, Drug Enforcement Agency, and we have that linked on our line. And I have the actual full fact sheet. I just kind of took their pictures and gave them credit down there. So that's the, the example that, uh, that they have on their sheet. Uh, and it, it was powerful to me, and I hope it's a powerful message to people who will see these posters, our students uh, in the classroom, because that right there tells you that just a, a tiny amount is deadly. Um, do we want to break up into, into smaller? Let's, uh, let's do that. Um, and we're, we're here, we're going to hang around, and we're going to be available uh, uh, to help you get what you need. Um, and, uh, and at this point, we'll, we'll, we'll break up and do that, and uh, just let us know if you want to wanna, wanna break up. We appreciate you coming out. And I do, have, I do have someone who's able to speak in Spanish. Yes. Okay.